Hello everybody and welcome back to the West Ham Network. This is your Hammers Headlines in association with the good friends over at KUMB.com. Knees up, Mother Brown. Make sure you do go and check out their wonderful content as per usual. But I do have another sponsor for today to talk to you about and that is our good old friends over at Football Prizes <coughs> because they do have a very good competition for you to enter this week it's a match day competition there's an opportunity to win two hospitality tickets versus chelsea plus there are 15 instant win prizes the main prize this week's competition is two hospitality tickets to see west ham take on chelsea at london stadium on saturday the 21st of september 12 30 p.m kickoff the competition also features 15 instant win prizes including signed memorabilia from max kilman and Mo Kudus tickets cost £3.95. The competition ends on Wednesday, the 4th of September at 7.30pm. Make sure you do go across to check out that link. I will put it in the description below. Fantastic prizes as per usual. So um, we're here to discuss the um, Julien Lopetegui press conference. And he's been a busy man, as per usual. Now, we do know that there is an embargoed section where he does speak to other um, newspaper articles, and therefore that stuff will come out as the day goes along. However, what we'll do is we'll bring you some of the stuff that we do know already from the original press conference. So without further ado, I shall get started and bring that to you right this second. So the first question he was asked was about the Bournemouth game. Of course, West Ham... Um, winning against Bournemouth, moving in and progressing into the third round of the uh, the Corrupt Cup. I'm going to start calling it the Corrupt Cup because it is Corrupt Cup. Um, he said it was the best present, a victory that allows us. It was uh, Julien Lopetegui's birthday yesterday, so of course West Ham winning on his birthday. A victory that allows us to go forward in this competition, but that is the past and the present is to be ready for the big challenge we have in Manchester City. We have to recover. They have had a day off in the week and had a big rest while we've had to fight very hard yesterday. We have had the motivation to play a Premier League match and we will recover as soon as possible to face this challenge with our best face. I love thing, you know, he's he's I love the focus that he's gonna do. And I didn't expect anything different, to be quite honest with you. Um, so, you know, you park that, you get the victory, but you use the momentum to try and win against, listen, one of the biggest tasks we're going to have all season. Um, he then was discussing about midweek and how West Ham had to play in Manchester City, had a break. I mean, listen, we're used to that. We've been playing European football over the last three or four years, albeit not with this squad, but um, it, it does happen, of course. So he was asked about that and he said the following, it happens and we have to be focused, we have to be ready and have to use these two days of rest um, a lot to have a lineup full of energy to face the best team in the world. The quality of City players and coach are top, but we're going to go on Saturday with the aim to be able to overcome an unbelievable team. That stuff that you want to hear from the main man um, in charge of West Ham. You know, there's no point in trying to say you're going to come in and 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 try and be submissive to the opposition. You've got to go at them, and I hope we do. I hope we. I really do. I, th I hope we don't see a low block and try and keep a hold of the ball and I definitely think there definitely are no doubts about it you can get at that Man City defence and if we got those players clicking up top we definitely can send a little bit of frighteners into Manchester City um, he then was asked about team news so let's get into what he said regarding the team news um, of course, Creswell did suffer an injury pre-Bournemouth game. He said, unfortunately, he suffered this injury. We don't know how long he'll be out, but we will wait for the scan from the medical team today and tomorrow. We're going to see which players are ready to stay in the squad list and to think about the lineup. Edson has been out for three months, so it's not easy for him. It was his first match in the lineup, and he showed big energy, which I think he did. He's going to need time to adapt and recover his best fitness, and he's going to do that step by step. Interesting comments, you know, makes you feel that maybe he won't start him from the off. I think he will. Um, but I suppose it sends you kind of smoke and mirrors opinions on that. But have to wait and see how um, long the Creswell injury is. And unless West Ham have options in the youth setup, then I could see West Ham, depending on how bad the injury from um, Creswell is, then I could see West Ham having to utilise the market for a position in there. Um, 
Uh, I think I've already done that one, sorry. So another interesting question was regarding transfers. And obviously the transfer window does close tomorrow. He said the first thing um, is that all the coaches say the same. A lot of main actors in football think you have to be competing while the market is open, but nobody is able to do anything about it. And we have to adapt. Anything can happen. But my focus as a coach is to be ready to face one of the best teams in the history of football. I put my energy in these things and Tim and the club are working on these things to ensure we have the best squad when the window closes. So again, reaffirming the position of everyone in the West Ham setup that Tim Stiden and his team are working on all the potential outgoings and ingoings at West Ham. Join me earlier on as I did a West Ham Daily, giving you some updates on a few of the other players. And there is more to come, trust me. Um, there's even more that I've not reported on yet, so I'll do maybe another video later on explaining to you some of the kind of bigger updates coming out of West Ham, and we'll see a lot of movement over the next couple of days. So just bear with it. Um, but he says, ensure we have the best squad when the window closes, and that is all we can ask for as West Ham fans. Another question which I found quite interesting was about the French players and the potential, um, you know, what, what what's the situation with the French players and how do they and how are they going to get managed? And I think his answer is great. He says, I'm not going to talk about names. All of them are in our squad and are ready to play against City. I have to take decisions, but I'm not going to say here what is going to happen. And I think he's done that. Um, remarkably well, very professional. You know, he's not associated. He's, he could have slipped up there and made people feel like they're not part of this team, but he seems to be utilising the squad already, you know, making five substitutions against Bournemouth. Um, so I think we'll see a lot more of that as time goes on. We're seeing switching up of, of players, and I think we might see a bit of a switch up again against Manchester City. Um, but, yeah. Definitely um, utilising the squad more than ever. Um, he was then asked about Jared Bowen. And of course, Jared Bowen has been on fire. He's already got two goals this season. He said, first of all, we're very happy for Jared. He's in the national team after getting called up um, into the international setup again. He's our captain. And he's ready to develop his responsibility. I'm very happy with his commitment. And I think he is a good player. And I think we all know he's more than a good player. But I also know that Julian Lopetegui knows he is a phenomenal player. He is, of course, as well. So, Nice comments on the good old uh, Jared Bowen. And the last comment that we were allowed to hear and see about was this man. How do West Ham cope with Haaland? He said, it's not only about stopping Haaland, but the City team. They're one of the best teams in the history of football, not just in the Premier League. Haaland is a striker and is very strong. I suffered him a lot of times in a lot of teams, but it's not only him. They have a lot of collective quality. and We have to try and beat these challenges we have in front of us. I absolutely concur with everything he's just said there. Listen, we do. They're a Man City are a whole new breed and I think teams are capable of getting at them. I think we can get at them. I think any team can get at them as long as they're screwed on and they have a kind of game plan to it. Um, I think we cannot go into this game with specific players starting specifically in defence, and that's going to be the key factor. And I fear that if we see the starting eleven and we see a couple of names in that team sheet, we will have the fear factor for that game. It's massively important we try and get away with something, try and get away with something from this game. That would give us really good momentum going into the next lot of games, especially against what Lopetegui says is one of the best teams in the history of football. So that brings an end to everything we've had so far. There will be, as an embargoed section, there will be more information coming out as the day goes on. I'm assuming lots more transfer news as well. So stay tuned. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. Of course, leave a comment. Hope you've enjoyed the content. Come on, your hands.